Ex-cons of Reddit, what was the hardest prison habit to break after being released? The hardest thing has been to talk without using the words duck, ducking or asshole in every sentence. I find myself hoarding toilet paper under my bed. Sometimes I do it without thinking and I'll look under there and have 10 rolls of TP. I didn't use a fork for a few weeks. Ate everything with a spoon without thinking. It's not the most interesting thing but I hadn't noticed it posted here. Doing laps. In prison. Every time you get time on the yard. You do laps. Seriously. Almost every single person does it too. When you get out. It's hard to break that habit. I spent 72 months in prison for a tragic car accident that I had caused. After I was released I kept telling my wife exactly what I was doing without her asking. She thought it was funny at first but after a few weeks of it she was starting to get bothered. Taking as long as you want in the shower. For the longest time after I got out, I took less than 5 minute showers. A couple guys I know after being out for 5-10 years wrap their arms around their plates and shovel food in their mouths at the speed of light. They are also super defensive of their food. When I first got to know them I jokingly swiped a chip off one of their plates and he flipped his fork up and demanded I give it back. Freaked me out a lil. Dude I work with said for the first little bit after getting out he would take a leg out of his pants when he did. Not sure how common that was. Dude's a fighter though. So maybe that had something to do with it. Making prison commissary only food. Everyone around me thinks it is gross as hell to throw summer sausages, pickles, cheese, Doritos, Cheetos, and such into my ramen noodles. But good lord. I can't stop. And I have been out for 5 years. Not me, but guy who worked for me. When things were very busy. I would often get carry out lunch for everyone and bring it back to the workplace. This one guy would eat a cheeseburger and french fries in 2 minutes. Whoa. Once I asked him why he ate so quickly. He said well knobs former. I spent 7 years in a federal prison and if you didn't eat your meal in 10 minutes. You didn't get anything. That 10 minutes often included the time it took standing in line to get your food. Okay then. I never said anything to him about it after that. A somewhat friend of mine did a few years and the one habit he couldn't shake was distrusting people. He said that people in prison are never nice. If they're nice it's because of a hidden motive. Up to this day he still doesn't trust people who act nice generous helpful dart. Towards him. My ex would sleep a certain way all the time. To me it seemed like he was sleeping as if he was in a coffin. His arms crossed and wouldn't move the entire night for a couple months. He eventually broke that habit. Edit. A word. I don't smoke. But every time someone offered me a cig I would pocket it. On the inside that's a bartering chip. Took me about a month or two to break. My friend once told me he got hooked on watching news channels and crappy daytime television. He said he also enjoyed listening to AM radio now. Even though he knows specific podcasts exist that are more tailored to him. He killed himself 3 years ago after getting a 20 year sentence just 1 year after getting out. Edit. A lot of people asking questions so I'll just go ahead and clarify here. At 18 he served a little over a year in prison for moving marijuana. Got out. Violated parole and got caught moving mass amounts of marijuana and other things like breaking into homes petty theft which was going to send him back for at least 15 years. After the jig was up he had a while where he was allowed to stay at home where he shot himself with a 9mm pistol in the head. He survived the initial shot but later died two days after going to the hospital. Was a great friend and knew him since elementary school. Top of our graduating class in high school. Just too much exposure to the wrong people. Not an ex-con but good friend's uncle did 20 years or so. His habit was how he ate. Everything on the 8 got immediately cut mixed and devoured fast as hell. Don't know why. He always said it's how you did it there. You ate in GTFO as quick as you could. Constantly looking over my shoulder. By far the hardest conditioning to break. Which I haven't in doubt I ever will. Is the constant pessimism and cautious optimism. You see. When you're waiting to work your way through court. Get a deal. And get sentenced. You will have your dates changed 50 times. Hope for certain things only to be disappointed. And anytime you are told something hopeful it doesn't work out. 
As a result, I never get excited for something until it actually happens. When my wife told me we were pregnant, I already knew from her symptoms that she was but still. You never know for sure till you take the test. I was obviously happy, but because I'm always cautiously optimistic and rarely show emotion, I couldn't feel comfortable or excited until I knew that my developing daughter was healthy. Even then, it didn't really hit me till she was born. You can apply this to anything especially big events. Getting engaged. Planning the wedding. Buying a house. Anything. I still hear from my wife how I wasn't crazy surprised or excited to be having a kid. I was. I actually was the half of the relationship who was dead set on a kid when my wife supposedly could have gone either way. You just can't get your hopes up or look forward to anything until it is here or has happened. I've been home over 7 years now and with my wife for 6.5. She's truly the catalyst that motivated me to truly change my life and to not give any more of my life to the system. But she'll never know how happy she makes me because she misinterprets my cautious optimism realism for pessimism or indifference. Being paranoid always looks over my shoulder and never letting anyone stand behind me. Even people passing on the side of me I'm always turning my head to see what they're doing food I could be the last one to eat first one done and I still stand when I eat around people. Hardest habit? Talking it to dumbass old men who think they're right cause they're old. Easiest habit? I'm never eating top ramen or getting a bowl cut from a Mexican barber again. Realizing I could just get up and go somewhere. That I could make plans tomorrow from a thousand different choices. Hard to break the habit of checking everyone who enters your vicinity. It feels like you've got to mark everyone off as a non-threat. Edit. I don't care if you do that and you've never been to prison. Staring at sharp things. Like there's no desire to use them inappropriately but you are just kinda shocked they're there and available for use. You might be surprised what qualifies as a sharp object. I remember whenever someone tried to hand me a knife or something to cut veggies I'd be afraid to touch it. Glass was the biggest thing though. Just mirrors in all the bathrooms. Real ones. I could smash that it and have a big jagged weapon. I can't believe this Italian restaurant has such a dangerous thing in their bathroom. Stopping thinking of objects as weapons is hard. Taking a it with my underwear up to my thighs to hide my junk. It took a long time to go back to pants around the ankles. Hoard feminine hygiene products. We were super limited on the number of pads or tampons they gave us. They didn't give any to the women in holding cells. There was dried and fresh menstrual blood on the floor and concrete benches. And a drain in the middle of the rooms like they intended to hose down the room. But if they did it was not often enough. Sounds like there's a major epidemic of ex-prisoners with PTSD that society doesn't talk about. I had to completely change my sense of time. I agree with all the people who said they ate super fast, but then we would slow walk back from the chow hall any excuse for a few minutes more outside. I made sure I never consolidated enjoyable things. If I had a snack I ate it and concentrated on it. If there was something good on TV, I watched it. Now, I'll snack while I watch a movie because there aren't enough hours in the day but on the inside I was trying to make hours and days go away. I've got a good job now, and nice respectable friends. But I still react to confrontational situations more quickly, decisively and efficiently than they do. I'm able to pull back at the last minute. But it's pretty clear that violence is not a tool in their arsenal. Not an ex-con but my stepdad has been in and out of prison for the majority of his life. He always said that whenever he gets out of prison you're so used to, to it being loud all the time that when he got home he couldn't sleep because it was so quiet. My uncle was in prison for a while and we've talked a bit about his experience and how it affected him. He has a hard time not being violent. You'd never guess since he mainly just sits in a corner and smokes but he's been out for nearly 10 years and still always struggles with using his words. The guy cannot stand authority. He tells me that it's hard to listen to bosses when you know you're probably smarter and tougher than them. He knows most people feel this way. But he just can't ignore it. He's taken up professional carving so he can be his boss. He's really in touch with our native roots now. On account of joining a First Nations gang in prison. Doesn't talk much. I don't know if that's because of prison but he really only speaks if he wants to. Not the type of guy who likes to talk just to talk. Doesn't have a lot. 
He has some sort of abandonment issue or something so he doesn't want a lot of things to miss if he goes back to prison. For all the time he doesn't spend with people. He's out with nature or doing something in the wilderness. I think it helps keep him calm and feel connected. Nice enough guy. But prison kind of ducked him up I think and he's going to live his life being slightly disconnected with people. Sure seems like ex-military and ex-cons share a lot of habits. Not sure what to make of that. Not wearing shoes in the shower. Eating with forks and knives. Having salt and pepper for food. Not always having to watch your back. Being able to get food when you want it. And just get up and leave to go for a drive or something. I still like having a stash of ramen packs somewhere even if I'm not going to eat them. Never been to prison. But I did a few months in county jail. Something I haven't seen mentioned is trading food. When I got out I asked my Joffrey to trade me her chicken wings for my McCorney. Pure habit. I really cold just went to the kitchen and got more chicken. Having your head on a swivel. Protecting your personal property in an obsessive manner. And sizing everyone up. When I was locked up. I always knew what was going on 360 degrees around me. Only the last unit I was in had lockers with actually locks. So before that. I had to protect my commie. Paperwork and books all the time. Most people would fight you to take your it because that is the respectful way to do it. But cat burglars are the worst. They sneak around and take it. They get ducked up by everyone when they get caught. It is code. You want my it. Come get it. Not sneaking around and steal it. I've been out for almost a year and a half but I still constantly size people up. No matter where it is. Grocery store. Walmart. Walking down the street. I still analyze each person and figure my best course of action if we have to fight. Not being able to go to the free infirmary when sick or hurt. One of my foster sons came to us from juvie. Every meal his arm was around his plate and he woofed down his food. My mastiff couldn't keep up. He always ate back to the wall hunched. Took my wife and I a month to show him no one would take his food and we had plenty more. Funny part is he went in the marines and did 8 years got out honorable and is now working in corrections. Two words. Grape. Jelly. I eat fast. I don't sit with my back to the door in public. I always scan crowds constantly. I question why people are nice to me. I carry extra clothes. Water. And various other things in my car in case I need it. Not a hoarder but harder to get rid of stuff. I don't like being away from home overnight. I also quit eating boiled eggs. I overseason my food. And I refuse to drink Kool-Aid anymore. All of this sounds eerily similar to be being deployed. I did almost 7 years. Been out 2 years. I'm 35. From Wisconsin. Wisconsin has a law called truth in sentencing. You do 100% of your time. There are multiple headcounts where the guards make sure that all of the inmates are accounted for. Every morning at 5 a.m. I felt like I was doing something wrong if I slept past 5 a.m. It took me almost 6 months before I slept past 5 o'clock. Even now. 6 a.m. Is sleeping and for me. It has allowed me to never be late to work. And show up every day. I was a drug dealer with no work ethic. And I slept until noon. Ironically, I am more successful than I ever thought I would be because of this habit. I actually just got poached by another company who offered me a 150% salary increase. Nice to see you. New tax bracket. In two years, I have become a model parolee. My life is great. I married my wife last September. I go to therapy for a multitude of conditions that manifested while I was a guest of the state. I was diagnosed with general and social anxiety disorder. And PTSD. I was out a few months and I had a panic attack. I had no idea what was happening to me. I was literally paralyzed and afraid. I thought prison ruined me. It made me a better person in general. I am not praising Wisconsin doc by any means. The guards dehumanized the inmates and treated us like pure garbage with no hope. They always told people you'll be back. I won't be back. People that go back produce job security. They want people to come back so they do what they can to steal your dreams. I changed myself. Prison allowed me to step back and really look at my life. I saw who I hurt. I saw who was there for me. I saw who abandoned me. 
I became focused on change after my third year. I contemplated suicide because I wasn't even half done with my sentence. After I seriously thought about hanging my life up I committed myself to being the best human being I could be. I revolted by behaving, teaching myself things, and being positive. My life is now amazing. I'm surrounded by people who love me and support me. All of the ex-cons reading this, and people just interested in this thread, that label is bullet. We are human beings with feelings. We can change. Stay positive and stay hopeful. Never give up. All of my fellow redditors. One love. I'm not an ex-con, but I messed around with one for about 3 years. I promise I'm being 100% serious when I say this. After he did one year he came out and had new sexual preferences. He was the first person's as I ate and he begged me constantly to do anal. He was also really into me giving him head in the shower. Prior to be locked up he wasn't into those things. He also kept his room ridiculously cold and kept one blanket. Not stabbing people when they take food off of my plate. I've been out 8 years and I still eat like a dog. Most prisons give you 30 minutes for your meal but that includes the walk from your cell block to the chow hall. Waiting in line and finding a seat. Normally by the time I actually get a piece of food in my mouth I've already got a CO yelling over my shoulder to hurry up. It's really annoying going out to eat with people and gobbling up your meal only to be stuck watching normal people eat for 20 minutes. Not an ex-con but my daughter's father is. He still cannot stand with his back turned to people. He is constantly watching over his shoulder. And he eats piles of food mixed together within minutes. I tried to wake him up from the couch to come to bed and about got punched in the face. He paces around our apartment whenever he's looking at his phone or on a phone call. In a restaurant. He will make sure he has view of majority of the people. In a mall. We will walk near walls and rarely be found in the middle of the food court. But in the end. He does it to protect us. He does it because he knows how rough prison was. He knows that the world is not as peachy as it once was and will do anything to protect the ones he loves. Not me but my best friend who spent two stroke three of her life locked up in juvie and prison. If she wanted a glass of water, she would ask permission. Also, if we were at my apartment and were gonna leave to go somewhere, she would stand behind the door and wait for me to open it. As if the door to my apartment was locked and only I had the keys. R.I.P.M. Shoulder gone with the serious tag. Not me personally but I know a guy that said after he got out he just wanted McDonald's. When he got there he spent 20 minutes staring at the menu trying to decide what to order because he wasn't used to having choices. When my dad got out of prison, 10 plus years, we nicknamed him Martha Stewart because he was such a clean freak. His home looks like an Ikea catalog. He has glass containers for his shoes. He wakes up early to iron wash scrub everything. When I lived with him for a year, I was grounded so many times over leaving water drops in the sink. I knew of a guy who got out after 15 years. He had to call a friend to come and let him out of his apartment. They'd go out, do some shopping or whatever and then his friend would lock him up for the night. Dude could not work doors himself without a rational fare. He did get better after a few months. But I hear he still has trouble doing things independently. Just knowing what I could do to someone who crosses me, knowing just how badly I could duck them up physically and mentally, I have to remind myself that no, this person probably has a family, probably hasn't done anything wrong in his life. Don't destroy him just because you can. Realizing I can unlock my own door to go outside. Took me a while to realize that my roommates didn't have to unlock it to let me out. Smoking. I picked it up there and haven't kicked the habit yet. I was released at the end of November after 3 years. And my biggest adjustment is grocery shopping. In prison jail you typically can only go to the canteen once a week. And it isn't like just walking into your local grocery store. You have to write all your items down in advance. So if you forget something, you have to wait another week to get it. Or if you're lucky, buy the item off another inmate. So it is still weird adjusting to being able to go and get groceries. Hygiene items. ETC. Whenever I need them. Definitely sleeping habits. Still haven't broke them. Haven't slept a full night in over a decade. 
Any noise and my eyes are open and I'm wide awake. I can hear really well. A raccoon comes nightly to eat scraps and cat food and I can hear him crunching outside on the porch from bed on the opposite side of the house. Roughly 60 feet away. Wide awake. An ex-con who works for me always asked to use the restroom. I have politely informed him that there is no need to do that. He's an adult and can use the restroom whenever he pleases. But he keeps asking and apologizing saying that it's hard to break the habit. He even told me it's hard to pee whenever he hasn't gotten permission. Out of fear he shouldn't be going in the first place. To get around this now he tells me I'm going to the bathroom. You might want someone to cover my station so I think we found a happy medium. Probably my pesky habit of not being able to vote. In 26 months the only habits I kept were the positive ones. Hygiene and exercise. The only thing I wish I had kept doing is reading. I read about 350 novels in 26 moss including the 5 released Game of Thrones books 4 times. My hardest habit to break after release was eating all the damn time just because I could. I gained a easy 40 pounds in the first 9 moss of being out. Even when you make a big store you still never eat good. I did spelling. Isolation. I used to be a social butterfly but after spending so much time keeping to myself I don't know how to socialize anymore. My dad's friend would wear his slippers in the shower for months. Not exactly the same, but a very good friend of mine grew up in China during the revolution. I took him out to lunch one day at McDonald's, his choice, and he ate with his arm wrapped around his food and literally scarfed it. Being the insensitive ignorant American I was, I joked and asked if he was afraid somebody was going to steal his food. He looked at me, serious as a heart attack and said, Yes, I guess growing up where one in three people starve to death will do something to you. I'll just say this, I'm glad you're out. I hope you can find something productive and fun to do for yourself. And I hope you never go back. I was only in for one full day and it was the worst experience of my life. I did some objectively crazy while I was in there. And I spent the whole time thinking they were going to send a gang of cops in the observed crazy tank I was in to kill me. I was in that seg. In a turtle suit. I contemplated suicide the whole time I was there. I thought, hey, if I bang my head hard enough on this cinder block wall, would I die? Maybe I should try it. I was going through some rough it at the time. And barely even knew where the duck I was. Hardest habit to break after having come out for me. The nightmares about having been in there. And the fear that maybe the cops still held grudges. Good luck, man. Not an ex-con, but have a good friend who is. He says he always has to have his back pointed towards a wall and be able to see all the exits so that he can see who is coming and going and if they're headed towards him. For safety, he also is constantly scanning the crowd to evaluate threats as well as making sure that he is friends with as many people as he can be so that everyone is his ally. It's pretty sad really, considering I used to think he was just super outgoing. Now I know that he's just trying to minimize threats and make sure no one has a reason to want to hurt him. He said that was his strategy when he was in prison for two years. Make everybody laugh and be your friend so all the toughest dudes got your back.